Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dies Cast. I am Russell Song, and with me I have. This man. When last we left off, our two adventurers, Aquins and Jonas, had become, in, after a brief encounter with a cockatrice, had become embroiled in a small town political intrigue after Bree had caused some, some greater than normal magical chaos by causing. Uh, Bilius, the uh, town uh, the town priest's son and effectively local bully, to run through the street naked <laughs> and seeking the affections of one of his uh, <laughs> colleagues. Yes, needs to say this. For it. Sorry. I applaud her for it. Yes, needless to say, this was hel- everyone found this hilarious, except Father Gregor, the town priest. Well, I'm pretty sure Billius wasn't terribly thrilled either. No. This led to some uh, political turmoil and led almost up to a witch trial, as it was. Fortunately, uh, Aquins and Jonas were able to intervene with the assistance of the Aldermen and, and Ivor and the Watch Commander Mustafa and managed to prevent anything untoward from happening towards Bree Tealeaf. Yes. Uh, caused the escalation to stop. Is, yes, but unfortunately it has certainly caused shall we say Father Gregor to have become convinced of the presence of magic on the plat- in the village of Lakeside. And it has also convinced both the adventuring party that Father Gregor is likely to be a antagonist toward antagonistic towards them as the days go on. That is a polite way of saying I can't stand him. <laughs> you know another, the old expression: "The fruit does not fall far from the tree." Yes. Another di- another thing that happened at the end of last time, in case you haven't seen that, is we are now second level. Yay! Stuff. So we've done all of our leveling up off screen. It'll become apparent what we've done as we go along. So we won't yep. go into too much detail of that right now. However, also this so I think that's all we need to cover. Yep. So as we come in, we are into the game. We are in at Ren's place, who is our mentor and a hermit wizard. He has we hmm, how to word this exactly. You wanted uh, to. Uh, I have a question for him. Yes, you had a question for him. Yes. Uh, I am planning to send my familiar, an owl, flying eastward or northeastward towards a rather reoccurring uh, plume of smoke yes. that is quite distant, but I'm kind of curious to see what that is. But I don't want to do that uh, without the ability to resummon my familiar. So my question to Ren is, Ren, I need to acquire some incense, uh, uh, high quality charcoal and the herbs required so I can resummon my familiar. Uh, and I want to know uh, <clears throat> can I get those from you? Yes. For those who are unaware about the Find Familiar spell, it requires 10 gold pieces worth of charcoal, incense, and herbs to be burned in order to resummon a familiar or to change his shape. Yes. So Ren has already explained to you that he has. Uh, does not have the amount required for that, that he's willing to part with, at least. So, he has... (sighs) So, as we've been doing this, uh, as he basically calls, pseudo-adventuring wizard's business, he says, for about two weeks now, Mm -hmm. he he points out that this is an excellent opportunity to test our uh, ingenuity and basically resource (laughs) gathering... (laughs) <laughs> uh, yes. Resource gathering and management skills, which is going to, which if we are going to seriously consider adventuring as our line of work, is something we're going to have to get to anyway. So he off, so you get the same feeling that might be more of the reason he may, he may actually have some, but he's uh, seeing this as another opportunity to test us. All right. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do during my long rest here is uh, brew another potion. Okay. So you roll for that. Do you want? Okay. 
Natural 20. <laughs> okay, so you managed to succeed, and on a natural 20, and I say you've actually managed to succeed on brewing two healing potions. So are we dividing oh, those? Oh, I love nat 20s when they matter. Yeah, are we dividing those up among the two of us then? Brew your own potions. I can't! Uh, didn't I give you a healing potion? Already? I have one currently, yes. So you're going to hang on to those two for the moment? Well, I have three now. Yes. But because Ren has, you know, stymied us on getting the materials here, mm -hmm. we don't have a lot of money. I mean, I have a total at the moment, which is, I mean, for the village, it's a lot of money, but it's 35 yes. gold. We can't but afford if we are planning on leaving this place, spending 20 or 10 or 20 or even 30 of it right now is more than I want to. So I think what I'd like to do is take that the natural 20, which is excellent bonus, uh, take that extra potion and use it as a bartering tool in the general store to see if I can acquire the necessary charcoal, incense, and herbs. So we'll see how that goes. If not, yes, you can have the, uh, the extra one. So you're hoping the healing potion is going to be able to convince Amber Torun, who is the dwarvish merchant who runs the general store, yes. that uh, to part with these uh, high quality herbs charcoal and incense at a lower price oh uh, mostly barter i hope i mean a healing potion is worth a quite a bit of money yes, uh, it is. so if i can barter with her i'd be really pleased well yes the potion is uh, worth considerably more than the, the incense and charcoal and herbs you'll need so yes the odds are quite good Yes, I don't. Like I said, I don't want to spend. I don't want to send my owl on this really long flight over possibly hazardous terrain uh, without the ability to hopefully you know be able to resummon her if things go wrong. Okay. So, I guess that means we are heading back. Yes. Oh wait a minute. Uh, there's still your projects we need to consider yes, before we leave. But, uh, so, yes. My projects, Aquan's projects, is attempting to create the ink and paper we will need to transcribe uh, the scroll, some of the scrolls that we have found. At the very least, we have a Featherfall scroll, which we have come to the realization is probably our best way off of the plateau. And we'd like to hang on to that. We'd like to actually copy that spell into our spell books, you and I. Which means... Instead of burning it like the sleep spell? <laughs> <laughs> How long are you going to hold on to that? As yes. long as I can milk it, I will. In case you also missed our previous episode, Aquans used the sleep scroll we found in a truly inspired way. Literally inspired. As in I got inspiration yeah. for it. Yes. But on the other hand, yes. Actually the best use of a scroll uh, that I could possibly imagine. But... You know, However, Jonas did have his eyes on possibly adding that to his spellbook. There will be other yeah. sleep scrolls. It's fine. That's okay. Yes. All right, so we that... need to find some ingredients. Yes, we do need to find the materials for that. However, the good news is most of the materials can be found in the forest on our way there. So just to avoid dragging this out too much, I think we're just going to cover... Th I'm going to... There are three areas that we know of that we can get some of these ingredients. Some for the ink. Well, and... make, make a roll, yeah. and we'll see how good it is. I'm going to also roll, because I am running a little low on herbs for healing potions. Yes, so... that should be... You should be down to two at this point, I believe. Yes. Okay. So I wouldn't mind... While you're gathering, I'm going to do the same thing, okay. and hopefully we'll, I'll find some. So... I'm going to go for the conifer tree sap here, which is in the resin, yeah. which should be good for the ink. All right, so that was an investigation check on both our parts. I have a 13 total. I have a uh, investigation? Is yes. Plus six, right? So I have an 18. Yep, okay. So that's good enough for both of us. All right, so please roll a d4 and add one. This is how many bundles of herb you're able to gather while I get the, the resin. Oh, well, that's a one. Plus, plus one, one, so two. Oh. oh, well, I can't complain. I got the natural 20, so... Yep. It all balances out. Still, you have four. You still have four bundles of herbs now for healing potions. Yeah, no, I'm, not, I'm perfectly happy with this. All right, I um, I also rolled a one. So I have, <laughs> I filled two vials effectively with this plant resin, which can be used to make ink. 
All right. Just gonna note that down here. Okay. Let's head towards town and see. Yeah, there will be a few more stops along the way, but yes, we're gonna do this quickly. Yeah. Not a good day for collecting plants. All right. All right. So as we head along south towards the plateau, okay. yeah. switch to the plateau picture, please. Oh, my bad. Sorry. <laughs> So we, heading from here. Yep, we're heading south. I'm going to try and gather some of the uh, petals from flowers along the way, All which right. can also be used as good uh, as coloring for the ink. <laughs> That's a ten total. That is the DC. <laughs> so, not very successful for plants today. Slightly better, or though on the roll. Okay. All right, so yeah. All right. Yeah. Flower petals. Okay. So I have the materials at least I think to make the ink now. So we're gonna do one more. Uh, we will probably still need to buy a couple things, but other than that, yeah, that's the main stuff. That's the main stuff. Cabin. And the last thing we want to check is actual for the ingredients for the paper and parchment, which is you said were yeah. cac, which were cactails and reeds, reeds and along brushes, the coast. that sort of stuff, which you can easily find along here. Yeah. So I'm going to do one last roll as we head to, as we come down towards Lakeside. All right. Higher than the last two days. Much higher, twenty three. There you go. Well, the place is littered with them. Okay. All right. All right. So in total, that's two vials of tree resin, four bundles of flower petals, and four bunches of reeds. No total haul right. from that. Okay. So that's. Let's keep heading on. Yes. Into the village. Or did we meet anything along the way? No, we didn't run into anything along the way. Is the squirrel still there? It would have unpetrified by now, so it probably would have run off. Unless somebody ate it. Did any little bits and pieces of squirrel fur? <laughs> no, you, you don't see anything like that. All right. Into town we go, then. You might still see the ashes and remains of the cockatrice. Yeah, yeah that was a good roll. Okay. All right. So, we are entering the village now as we come up to the farmlands. Is there any naked guards running around? Make a perception check. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm glad I burned that natural one now. Nope. <laughs> no, there's nothing really. All right. We rolled a 20 and a 1. This is going to be a very polar day. At least a 20 was on something worthwhile and the 1 was on something useless. Yes, I would be really upset if I rattled a natural point and looked for naked guards and a 1 on making my potion. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. If, so, if, as we enter, so, we're entering the village now. If the place is calm and quiet, mm -hmm. I would like to head to the general store, please. Oh, sorry. I guess yep. we should switch the maps again. There we go. All right. So I'd like there to is the uh, there is some commotion on the other side of the lake over by the temple, but you, that's pretty far off at the moment. Over where? On the other side of the the bridge and the and the river there. Yeah, over, over here? by the temple and where Gregor's house is, there seems to be a bit of a crowd uh, crowd uh, gathered. He's possibly doing another sermon. You don't know. His last uh, one didn't go so well. Yes, that was funny. Hmm. Uh, I don't want to push my luck on that okay. right this moment. Yes, I think what I'd rather do is, before things get out of hand with him, yeah. so this I is want to go to the general store and 
um, talk okay. to the proprietor. So you want to go talk to Amber. Okay. Yes. So she is, uh, well, basically, she's, at, she's out in the market because it's a nice day, and they often will just bring everything out of the store into the open-air market by the square on such okay. days. So she's there. <laughs> so I, I go up to Amber. She, Hi, Amber. How are you doing? Goes, eh, hello. Hello, Jonas. Hello, Aquins. She says, what can I get for you two today? You see that there's at least a few other hired hands actually handling the stalls mostly. She is obviously the one in charge. So she's just... I have a proposition for you. I need uh, some really good quality incense, uh, charcoal, and herbs uh, for a little project of mine. And I don't have a lot of money. Nice. In fact, I she have says, hardly any money. Says, uh, but I would like to barter for it. She says, well, it depends on what you have to offer. Those, those things you are describing in the higher qualities obviously do cost a bit of money. Yes. Okay. And I take out one of my brand spanking new healing potions. Okay, so this is one of the ones you just brewed, okay? Yes. I don't know if they're better fresh or not. We never cover that, but... Potions do not really have a shelf life. Oh, I don't know. Maybe they do, but... They're magical. We yeah. found them in ruins, and... <laughs> yes, all right. They well, do not have a shelf life. That, that aside, uh, I, I tell her... This is a standard healing potion. And I would like to trade this for uh, bundles of those uh, aforementioned herbs and stuff. So this is going to be a persuasion check. Because you're offering something of considerable value, this is an advantage. Alrighty. And the DC and isn't going to be as high. Minus one charisma modifier. Do you want it to barter? Uh, so with the minus one, that is a 16. All right. Uh, yeah, she's more than willing to get that trade. She's going to go, she's going to go into her actual shop proper at the moment to see how much of it she has in stock, because that's not a common item. Okay, well, I will fall. I'll go with her. I'll tag along. The other thing she hasn't, uh, we haven't come to an agreement on yet is... How many sets am I getting for this one healing potion? Because there is a considerable difference in their monetary value. No, well, she's going to go in there, and she has exactly three bundles. Once she checks of that of that incense, you can uh, once it's been wrapped up in the proper quantities. Right. So that is so normally I... thirty gold. There, the potion on a, po a potion on average, healing potion average is usually worth fifty. So there is a considerable price difference here. Yes, she'd be very happy with that. Yes. Um, if you want to try... that I could use? Sorry? Is there anything else here that of use to me? Like, what's in the... I mean, I obviously I've, I mean, I've grown up here and I should know, but I don't know. Well, it depends on what you're looking for. This is a general store, so they have a wide variety of merchandise. I honestly can't think of anything else. You're not likely to find many other spell components here, if that's what you're looking for. And you're not likely to find healing potions, because... Well, I already have one of those, yes. so that's fine. That's what I'm using. Yeah. Uh, right. We could... Uh, I, I just point out that you... Uh, one of the things you mentioned is that possibly might need chestnuts or some other sort of tree nut for the ink. We could ask her to throw some of that in. Sure. She's also yes. willing to reimburse us some money if we don't... Uh, a little bit for this because she understands that you're selling you're trading her something that's worth a lot all right how much is she willing to give me in money then all right so she's willing to give you the three sets of herbs the chest yep. the the nuts that are required to be ground up into powder for the ink and she's going to give you 10 yep. gold all right that's fair okay so are we splitting the gold or not <laughs> you didn't split the potions Didn't I give you the last potion you have? So if I, so we're each splitting the gold? Sure. Alright. Well, that gives us a bit more spending money. Yeah, up to whole 40. Okay. Three. 
All right. So, all right. That's what I really cared about. That's what I needed to get done. Yeah. Should we go and see what good old Gregor is up to? I thank her for, by the way. Yep. For... Okay. So, mark off that you spent the healing potion. There. Right, I don't get to keep that, too? No. <laughs> you still get to keep the other one you made, so. You're up one, at least. Yep. Which oh, is... I'm very happy with this. This actually worked out really well. That okay. 20 was uh, timely. Alright. Because I really want to go see what's going on because uh, if he's riling people up, I would like to at least know what's going on. You want options. It's largely what being wizards is all about. You don't want... You don't like... Surprises. I like knowledge. Well, you, do, you don't mind uh -huh. surprises, but you don't like... You don't like limitations. So I, I think we should head over here okay. on top of the bridge yeah. and just have a look. Well, as we're heading through the market square, you do see a banner over where the late Edith's house is. So her house is here. That was her house, yep. Yeah. yeah. And the banner reads? Uh, the banner reads that uh, there is going to be a viewing of her estate for the upcoming auction, which is tomorrow, you realize at this point. Oh. When's the viewing? The viewing is uh, the entire day. It's gonna be it's gonna be open in the afternoon. So technically, it is open now, but uh, it's, go um, it's going to go on till late into the evening. So you have time if you want to do something else. Yeah, I think I'll go over to the bridge first. I want to see what he's up to. Okay, I want to keep an eye on him. All right. Uh. All right. So you go over to the bridge is where you want to stay. Yep, okay. just for the moment, yeah. Uh, you see a bunch of people. There's They're setting up some tables and some chairs. These are not from the inn. These are probably ones that Gregor had in storage. You know right. that this looks like a, a sort of festival atmosphere is in the air at the moment. There's a brazier being set up. There's a portable mini altar, which you know is kept within the Temple of Mithras. And there is a bull tied off onto the side of the pen currently eating its heart out to a bunch of hay and other and having all the water can drink. This looks like he's prepping for a bull sacrifice, which is a traditional offering to Mithras. Mm. Normally held during the winter solstice, but we're late summer heading into autumn at this point. So, it's so, a bit early, maybe. but you think he might this might be something he's planned because of the current situations. Yes, he's trying to gain some face back. Yes. After the few things I've done, or we've done, I should say. So this is a religious offering crossed with a fest some small festivities and a feast. This is not going to be again. This is something that's going to probably need to be set up. Need to be. This is in the process of being set up. It's going to be. There's going to be a long ritual and a sermon, and then there's, the bull is going to be sacrificed, and then it's going to be cooked up over a fire pit that's being currently. Fed with uh, charcoal and logs. Oh, it's gonna take forever to cook a bull. Oh yes, this is <laughs> this is not a this is a, there's also some small festivities coming uh, set up on the side. Right. But mostly this is a place to for food and religious sermon and drinks. There's going to be drinks as well, even though this is technically a religious sermon. They understand that the service this is this is also a festival. This is something for people to do and enjoy. Well, unfortunately, I don't know, like, the enlarge or shrink spells, so, or reduce, I guess it's called. Yep. So I can't really make the bowl really big and have it get upset and leave. It is just tethered at the moment. By hemp and rope. Well, I mean, I'm sure there's a ton of people around, right? Oh, yes. A good portion of the village is here, probably. So setting the bull free will cause chaos and mayhem and well, probably some carnage. Yeah. Don't really want people to get trampled. I just want to make him lose face. Yeah. An but angry bull is hmm? an angry bull is probably not the way to go about that. No. I was thinking of this maybe untying it and then trying to lead it away. I can do that with Unseen Servant, but they would just simply get it and bring it back. Yeah. If I try and anger or startle it, uh, then, yeah, we got a stampede in our hands, and he loses face, but we could end up killing people, so... Yes. I don't think there's a situation here where I can win at this. Doesn't seem like it at the moment. 
Uh, I'll just keep an eye on them. Uh, and what I'll, what I'll do is, there anyone right by me currently? On the bridge? Yeah. Well, apart from myself, no, there's no one really on the bridge. Most people don't stand on it. They go, they go across, and it's like. Oh, I'm just standing and like with my arms up on the railing, and just staring into the water at the moment. Yeah, there's no one else standing by here, but besides me and you, at the moment. Okay, right down. There's a little gap underneath the bridge here on this side. Right down here. Yes. I'm going to uh, bring my owl into this world. Okay. This so is just under the. Just under the bridge. Yep. And then I'm going to have her fly. Over and perch up on this building here and oversee this area. Okay. Easy enough to do. Uh, I just want her to, you know, warn me if anything really crazy happens. Are you attempting, are you having your owl do this stealthily or? Uh, I'm just going to have it fly there. You can see if someone notices her. Okay. This is not, like, owls don't make any noise when they fly, so this is just if someone wants to look up and see an owl. Okay. Well, you're not doing this stealthily. A few people do notice, including Father Gregor, and they seem to take notice that it's just, just an owl. That's about it. Yeah. You do notice that Gregor stares a bit longer than everyone else before returning to what he was doing, setting up for this. Well, I'm not going to pop into my owl's brain and have my owl stare at him. <laughs> I'm just going to let it... Is this going to be their preening feathers and yeah. looking around like owls do? Okay. Yeah, natural owl behavior. So that does sort of preclude you doing your flyby off the plateau at the moment. Temporarily. Te at the moment, yes. Because I do want to go and check out Edith's Edith place, so... Okay. That is something we didn't do when we were in there last. Well, we did. We were just looking for something very different. Yes. Looking for a murderer. Alright. Uh, head off the bridge. Head towards Edith's house. Okay. And who's overseeing this? Uh, this would be Varus, who is uh, the high elven uh, archivist who works for the Alderman. Okay, he's a friend of yours. He, uh, he's on friendly terms with us. There are also two members of the Watch present. Or anyone specific? Uh, you do recognize uh, one of them as being the member of the Watch who was in the basement of the tower with us when that giant frog was summoned. Uh, one of Father Gregor's minions. Yes. The other one, uh, you do recognize... You think his name is Silas. You think? You never really interacted with him. He's just they're both, both of them... Admittedly, you never interacted with the other one before, and you don't even know his name. Yeah. Or if you do, you've forgotten it. They're mostly okay, just um, standing on guard by the entrance and just letting people go in. They're just mostly trying to keep a watchful eye on people to make sure no one makes off with anything. No one steals the silverware. Mm -hmm. Alright. Um, ask... What's, sorry, what's his name again? Uh, which one? The librarian. Varus. Varus. Yes. Um... Just ask him, like, uh, has there been a lot of people going in and out? Is there a lot of interest in Edith's uh, um, paraphernalia? Oh, yes. This is, she was the uh, old, well, as the formerly oldest living member of the uh, village. She's a mass yeah. collection. People, she's become almost a local legend for the things that she's kept. People are showing up in droves just to see, uh, they've been ca uh, just to see what she has. They've been coming in all day, and I imagine, which is why we'll be staying open till probably uh, up until after sunset. Father Gregor's little festival over there has drawn a bit of a crowd at the moment, but all of them were in here before checking this out. They know the fact. They know the fact that this isn't going to be set, done until tomorrow. All right, uh, I'm gonna have a quick look. Uh, do I see a lot of people in there currently? Oh, well, there's about half a dozen people milling around at the moment. All right, well, let's just go in. There you go. Have a look. Okay. I, I mean, as we enter, I lean next to you and ask, 
should I, uh, in a whisper, I say, should I cast Detect Magic in here? Do you think it's worth it? Um. Well, I mean, we're not interested in her chairs and dining room set and plates and pots and all that stuff. Yes. So the only thing we are interested in are possibly uh, any interesting books and histories, that sort of stuff she might have. And yeah, if she has magic, that'd be excellent. But um, I don't really want to cast it in here. We could uh, nice. just... Uh... If you want to do that, I suggest we go to uh, my place, or my mom's place, I guess I should say. You live there, too. And what you can do is you can ritually cast Detect Magic, and at the same time, I'll ritually cast Unseen Servant. And that way, uh, we can go back in prepared. Okay. All right, so we are going to briefly excuse ourselves go to your uh, place and ritual cast our spells. It's right here, yes. so I mean, it's not a long walk. Not a long walk. Okay, so the cast... Alright, so we cast ritual cast those spells. Detect magic is concentration. Lasts for ten minutes. Unseen okay. servant lasts an hour, and I... Pretty sure no, it's not concentration. I'm pretty sure it's not. I'm just going to double check. It's not, no. And it does last for an hour. Yep. Just in case I see something I really want. All right. All right. So we enter the viewing area. As we're entering, yep. at least one per one person leaves as well. So there's only about five people in here now, apart from us. All right. All right. Varus is also in here usually, just uh, keeping yep. an eye on things from his little uh, uh de basically he's a desk setup almost. All right, so you only have ten minutes. Yes. So, this is... quickly through all the rooms, do a scan of this place. Right. The the room. living room area is where the viewing is set up. Oh, all the stuff's there. Yes, you remember being in Edith's room. Is it house? It isn't that big. She has oh, okay. she has a bedroom. She has a front living room, general room area, yeah. and she has a back room, which is a bit like a combined <coughs> uh, storage area and a pantry. Which has, just, okay. which has some... So you can pretty much just stand in the middle of this place, turn 360 degrees, and have scanned the whole place? Yes, we can wander... We also can wander around, obviously, to look natural, looking through things. Yeah. All right. Well, you do your pirouette, and I'm going to go see if there's any interesting books that she has. I'm not obviously going to pirouette. I'm going to follow you around as we do this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you do it on one toe, with the other foot cocked up to your knee and you just do a nice little spin. I have a dexterity of 12. I do not think I'm going to be doing that. Alright. <laughs> I'm going to go and investigate see if there are any interesting books. Okay. And that will be a 21 on investigation. It's a bit of a waste on this because it's not... It's 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 not... They're not hidden. It's set up as a viewing. So... You get a good yeah, look. Yeah, but I'm looking for... I'm not looking for a book. Yes. I'm looking for interesting books. So there's a whole bunch of furniture and just general things that we aren't interested in. So I'm going to tell you things that do catch our interest. All right. Uh, the first thing is an actual portrait of what looks like to be Edith in her late 20s, sat at a table with a young man who looks to be in his 30s. This is likely her late husband, Frederick, whom you've mm -hmm. never met because he was he died before you were born. And there, this interests me because... It's just general interest. It's just something to catch uh, okay. There's also a price on that for starting... Starting pr price is going to be five gold pieces. Wow. Ah. All right. Uh, the next thing that catches your eye is a book. Specifically, it's an old, battered, worn-looking... On closer inspection, you realize it's an atlas of maps. Specifically of maps, probably off the plateau, you would imagine. Based on its... Can I open it up and look at it? You can. It, it is actually open at the moment. Alright. I'm gonna flip through. Uh, yeah, it's uh, maps of various uh, places and towns and regions off of the plateau. Is it, I'm gonna go to the... Usually in these books, uh, just on, inside the first cover, there is a date, a publisher, 
I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know who wrote this. Is this uh, something that had... Like, is there a date on it saying when this thing was relevant? Yes. Uh, you do not recognize the author's name. Uh, the date is... It is given... The date that is given there is... You know, it takes you a little while to recall, but you're pretty sure that is... Uh, the age before the current one, which means this has happened before the fall of... This was printed before the fall of civilization. This is probably close to 500 years old. That is a very old book. And it's in very good condition. Despite that fact, yeah. I point out to you that it is not magical. True. This has been cared for, though. Uh, the price on that is set at five silver pieces. All right. Getting into my price range. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm going to close the book. Yep. I don't want to get damaged. Uh, and then, is there like a, are the books like in a little group? This one's been set off to the side, you notice. And the rest of them. Yeah. Varus notes you looking at this. Oh yes, I was asked to set that one off to the side from some by someone. That's why it's separate from the rest of them. Someone specific? Took interest in this? Uh, yes. Someone I know? Uh, Father Gregor. He says, he turns back to deal with, uh, ask, uh, uh ask, a, deal with another customer's question. There, who has a question about some silverware. Great. Bidding war with Gregor. All right. All right. Good price, at least. Uh, well, I can't exactly just stick it back in the pile, because he knows it exists. Yes. Yeah. Let's just move on. All right. So the next item we come to is an ornate gold ring set with an emblem. Based on how the care to it, you think this might be a wedding band? And it says right. 10 gold pieces starting price. I, t uh, uh. I tell you that that is not magical. All right. All right. The next thing that catches your interest is a medicine chest with a number of glass vials, some of which still have liquid in them. I get a okay. faint... Magical aura from some of the thing from some of the vials in there. So, any particular school of magic? Uh, I just give it once over, and I say, no, it doesn't fit any of the schools of magic. But there are some enchanted items that don't. Right. The starting price of that for this medicine chest is one gold. Clearly, someone right. thinks that uh, that this could be a novelty use, basically. Alright. Well, it's old apothecary sets sometimes uh, do have that kind of a allure. Yeah. Alright. All right. The next we could thing we come to is also another container. A jewelry box, in this case. Filled with all sorts of... It says... Labeled with rare gemstones and jewelry. This is... Uh, this... There's a literal line that says, This is one of our high price items here today. There is... The price set for that is 25 gold pieces. <laughs> Starting price is 25 gold yes. for a bunch of And I say, jewelry. there is an aura of magic about this one. It's for something in there is rating magic. Okay. Uh, I am going to feign interest in this, yeah. and I'm going to go up to the box. I, as before you go, I say, it's a familiar magic, and it's con rooted in conjuration. Oh. I open up the box. Sort through. Do I find any little class crystalline figurines? Are you doing this discreetly? No. 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 Okay. Uh, Vara says, uh, Jonas, what are you what are you doing there? Uh, just, I don't know. It just seems kind of interesting. I'm just looking to see if there's anything. He's like, oh, okay. He's, he he lets you do it because, you, but he can tell he's watching. You can you. come watch me if you like. He's watching you, but he's not moving from his spot. All right. Yeah. So you just want to look through there to see what's in there. Yeah, I'm looking for a crystalline figure of an animal or something along those lines. Alright, these, you find at least three familiar looking gemstones. They look like the same ones you found already. Yeah. Uh, they have a little rune in them. Yeah, one is, uh, you recognize as an agate, and it's in the shape of a bear. Alright, so we got some crystals. Yeah. A bear. Yeah, which is an agate. There yep. is a flying insect. You're not entirely sure looking at it if it's, a, it's meant to be a bee, a hornet, or a wasp, but it's one of those. And that's yep. an emerald. Okay. 
Okay. And then there is a jet black, like a literal jet stone, yep. which is in the shape of a scorpion. Oh. And as I you also look through them, I gotta, there's, I gotta, oh, sorry. there's actually there are more things. Those are the only crystals that sound familiar to you, but you also find a few pearls, which you recognize as, poss- as likely being the same value as the one you require to use for identify. Well, I'm not a gemologist, no. but I'm going to... I, I handle that pearl regularly when I do my uh, work yeah. with magic. So I'm going to pick up one of the pearls, I'm going to have a look at it, and see if I can figure out its value at... Okay. As a spell component, this would be an arcana check for what you're rolling for. That'd be a two plus six. That'd be eight. This is something you're familiar with. You're you're fairly sure this is probably a hundred GP pearl, which would fit, which would be fit for the identify spell. There is only I didn't deal with the two. Cool. <laughs> yep. Now the other two, the other three items. Yes. I'm going to hold them up to the light, kind of just like I'm really examining them. Yep. And peripherally, I'm looking at you. Looking for an indication that this is magical. Yes, it and is those. All three of yeah, them. it's those three. I point out. I, I, those are the. I mentioned to you that's the only aura of magic from that chest. Okay. All right. I am going to put everything back. Yep. Show him that my hands are empty. Yep. He nods. <laughs> I'm just looking. Yep. Uh, I don't. This box is open, right? Yes, it is open, so people can look in and see the things. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go over, is there, is there an open window? Uh, yes, there's a few windows open in here just to let the air through. Okay. And light in. I'm going to go over to him. Yes. And you can come too. It's fine. Okay. Uh, I said, ah, there's a couple things in there I'm interested in. Is that going to be, and while I'm talking to him, I want my unseen servant to go one at a time, pick up each of those gems, and discreetly, I'll just like hold, I'm going to have it hold it really low so it's below, like really down near the floor. Go over to the window and drop it outside the window in the back. The good news is that these stones do not trigger unless you speak the incantation. So, dropping yes. out the window. And, uh, I am very familiar with these. This is going to be a stealth check for your unseen servant. It is invisible, which gives it yes. advantage. And I'm going to distract the guy by talking to him because I want to say, all right, there's a couple of things in there I'm interested in, and I would like, is this going to be sold as a lot, or can I divide it up? And I'm going to basically create a lot of small okay. talk yeah. while my unseen servant does this. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. So Vars is distracted. There are five right. other people in the room, so this is still a check. But all the right. DC is lower, and you have advantage. So this is for the first one. Yes. Uh, that would be a 19. Easily enough. Which one are you starting with, I'm going to ask? Uh, let's just start at the top and work our way down. So that's, the first one's the that's bear. That's the bear in the agate. Okay. Right. Yep. It goes out easy enough. Yeah, Vars says, uh, yeah, there's, there's been a few other people. Gregor, Father Gregor also showed some interest in this particular set. He said that Edith had some beautiful pieces he wouldn't mind adding to his personal collection. Yes, but did he take interest in the sense of having it divided up, or I mean, he did have that book set aside? Uh, he did ask if that, but we said no. We're selling this all as, as a set. All right. My second roll. Yes. The four. That's the higher. The other one's a one. <laughs> okay. If any, if I notice anyone paying any particular attention. Yeah. I am going to just... Oh, gosh, I can't do that. That's a verbal command, right? I think it's unseen uh, for Unseen Servant. Yeah. Isn't it verbal? One second. We will check. Mentally command. Okay. So it's the same as your familiar. I'm going to just uh, have... If I notice anyone's... Like I'm gonna, if I notice anyone taking interest in the little gem moving across the floor, uh, it's going to have them stop. That's going to be like, 
Uh, yeah, okay, it stops. Uh, an, old, an older woman looks over and sees this, like, walks over, looks at it, it's like, hmm. like, sees the, sees it there, it's like, oh, it must have fallen. Puts it back. Her interest is, seems to be waiting, and you see her actually turn and leave. It's like, eh, you hear her mother say, might be something's worth spending some money on. Uh, That's about uh, it. Number two! <laughs> that was a two, by the way, on her roll. Yeah, no. Uh, 16. Easily enough this time. Looks like the wasp is literally flying through the air. All right. Yep. Step number three, or four, I guess, on the last right, one. last one. Highest is an eight. Highest is an eight. That's below passive perception, normally. Yeah. For most people. Yeah. Well, unless they're, you know... All right, this is a little past our perception, but the most astute person is distracted. I'm just going to see if anyone else even cares. Somehow, you manage this. It is, you are just like, somehow, you manage to just worm this little scorpion figure around everyone with your unseen servant. <laughs> that was a seven. <laughs> somehow... <laughs> Somehow you managed to throw all three of these out the open window. Not throw, just, just gently drop. drop. It is also the window that faces the north of this, so it's closer to the alderman's house. That's the science. You dropped them out of Yes, the back end, yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Right, it's, just... it's grass out there, right? Yes. Okay, so these are... Now the question is, do you want to try for one of the pearls? <laughs> I rolled really badly on the valuation for them. Yep. But I am going to have my unseen servant take the one that I think is worth the most and do the same thing with it. Okay. Eighteen. Easily enough. But Varsus right. is like after that is like Yes, uh, if you're interested, feel free to stop by tomorrow and place a bid. As I said, Gregor is the only other one who's shown particular interest in this so far, but... Uh, it's an awful high amount of money. I mean, I know that it is jewelry, but this is just an agrarian town. Ah, uh, but... Anyone... And it says, like, yes, but uh, Gregor himself talked me into raising the price a little bit. He thought that it should be... What, what, what was the bid, before, like, the amount before? Oh, we said it at 15, so we only added about 10 to it. But uh, he said that this was a good way of adding funds to the town. He was perfectly fine making, seeing it as a charitable donation on the part of the church. If he spent this money on that. Okay. It, it's fine. fine. It's still a fair price. Anyone who want, who's interested in a collection of treasures such as these, he says, pointing over to them, is, and says, it seems like a fair price to me. As much as I've enjoyed our conversation, I do have to get back to work, though. Yeah, that's fine. We want to finish perusing anyway. All right, so somehow you um, managed that. That's amazing. Well, it worked. The only reason it worked is because they rolled worse than you. That's how Dungeons & Dragons works, so I'll be fair. Yep. Okay, so are we going to continue our examination of the remaining things that have caught interest? Yeah, you're running out of... Uh... Yes, that took probably that conversation probably took about three to four minutes. Yeah, so the spell's half done. Okay. So the next thing is not really a book. It's more like a bundle of papers in a folio, which may have yeah. been a manuscript, possibly. There's lots of okay. loose uh, bits of paper. This, I point out, does have ma a magical aura to it. One of the pieces of paper? Uh, uh, a few of them, I say. Uh, what's his name again? Varus. Varus. Is it okay if I leaf through this? Just to see what this stuff is contains? He says, be extremely careful. Some of those pages are delicate. I'm fairly dexterous. Yes. I'll gently. I'll be very careful. The starting price for this one is five gold, you see. Five gold? Half this village can't even read. That's why it's probably so low. This will probably 
end up in a personal collection like the Alderman's if no one buys it. Uh, all right. Um, I'll leave through okay. gently, cautiously. You can tap me on the shoulder when I get to okay. a magic one. Okay, about the fourth page in, I put a hand, I tap you on the shoulder. You also. What am I looking at? Sorry? What am I looking it at? It is a. F pretty. It looks like a spell scroll to you. You're pretty sure. You've seen enough of them at this point that this is a spell scroll. It's just all. It's just laid out flat. Uh, arcana this check. will be an arcana check to try and see if you can decipher what the spell is. That would be a 21. Okay, with that roll, I'm just just to keep us from having to re-roll all of them for this, because there's a few in here, yeah. I think that's a good enough roll that I'm going to cover some of them. So the first one we come to is Chromatic Orb, you realize, which is a first level evocation spell. It was a spell that caught your interest maybe briefly when you were learning your initial spells, but the cost for that was, the material component was ludicrous. It's a hundred gold piece diamond. It requires a gem or something. A hundred gold piece diamond is the material component. Of that. <laughs> but it's a good combat spell, you realize. That might be worth something. Yeah. Alright. The next one you come to is an illusion spell, which this definitely caught your interest and you're happy to find is Disguise Self. Ooh. Another first level spell. So well within our our ability to cast. Oh, I can do so many things to Gregor with this one. <laughs> <laughs> so that catches your interest. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Uh, the next two get stuck together, and you have to put them apart a little bit. It's fine. Uh, so you have two more spell, two more of these, you realize, as we go through this. Yeah. Uh, one is another evocation spell, specifically Thunder Wave. Alright. And the last one is a scroll of sleep. I felt bad, okay? <laughs> There's a little meta gaming in there. <laughs> I'm the DM. It's allowed. <laughs> All, right. All right. So it's just those four. <laughs> I wouldn't put that as just. That's like quite the treasure trove for a wizard. Yes, it is. Well, I can't see being able to do this again. No. And as far as you can tell, the only one who's really in uh, invest, no one's. You can, as far as you can tell, no one's really interested in this. Except possibly Varus. It'll probably end up in the archive if it doesn't get bought. Okay, I'm going to put them back. Mm -hmm. And I go to Varus and says, There's some interesting... In the manuscript pile, there's some interesting stuff there I would like to be able to peruse and read some more. Oh, because you've found some interesting documents, have you? No, I looked at that. Uh, that's, that's going to end up in the library if no one wants it. I already have the Alderman's permission, but... He said, as long as I give everyone else a fair shot at it first. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm bidding against it. I'm bidding for it, I should say. I'm just asking now. I know this is not particularly on the up and up, but I want to know if I'm going to be in a bidding war with you, possibly, over this? or. Uh, he says, uh, make a persuasion check. That's, uh, this is... Yeah. That'll be a five minus one is a four. He says like, uh, he's like, I know, I know. It's not. I mean, that's why I'm asking. It's not exactly it not the something. best thing to ask me. He says, but yeah, I know. I'm sorry, didn't mean to put you in the spot. He says, on all honesty, it's an interesting piece, but I, I don't know. I honestly can't say yet. There's a few other what things is, here that. What is the starting price on that? Five gold. All right, well, we just acquired a little extra, so well, that will have to wait. Yes, both of us just acquired that exact amount. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to... Nothing else? No magic in this? There, I'm go there are two more items that caught our interest, and I'm just going to go through those quickly. Oh, all right. There is the remainder of Edith's book collection. Okay, so all the books that she had... Except the one that except the atlas Father and Gerger. technically the the folio, but it's not really much of a it's not really a book. Right. Uh, nothing yeah. magical on that. I say. So these are just older books. Books. Yeah. These are books. Uh, are any of them anywhere near as old as that atlas? Uh, no, not that old. These are probably more recent editions. 
Okay. The entire, despite this fact, because it's obviously, it's effectively her entire library. Yeah. It, the starting price on that is 10 gold. So, there's probably uh, a few dozen books here. So, well, the problem is that's a few dozen books as it's quite weighty. Yes. You do realize yeah. that this is also likely to end up in the Alderman's archive with Varus, yeah. which, which you can access with his permission, which we've done before. So, if we wanted to read any of these, it might be easier to just wait and do it that way. It's certainly cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. And the last item of interest? The last item is a beautiful, ornate short sword set in a display case with a engraved scabbard that has says it was... Belo- that in, The note says, this belonged to Frederick. Oh, so this is her husband's yes. sword. He apparently had some sort of career as a soldier at one point. And this is magical, I say. It has its starting price is fifteen gold. A bit steep for us, but considering this is a magic sword, <laughs> it's quite. Well, uh, Varus says, "Ah, one of the." He says, "He's when you're looking at this. Ah, that that's a popular item. We've had two. I've had two people already say they're both interested in but in bidding for that. That's unfortunate." Yeah, it says, well, lovely sword, but... He says, well, unless you think you can uh, outbid Father Gregor and the Watch Commander. He says, that <laughs> might be a little much. Says, the price is a bit steep already, but they're both interested in it. All right. All right. Well, we'll find out tomorrow, won't we? Yes, we will. And uh, that's about everything, and I don't have... Right. There's probably about a minute left in Detect Magic at this point. Alright, well, I have a lot of time left on an unseen servant. Yes. But. A sword is going point. to be much harder to discreetly get out of here. Oh, yeah. no, it's not worth it. I would do the scrolls long before the sword. And I don't even think I'm going to be able to get those out. So, what I want to do is we're going to leave. Gonna Swing around to the back, presumably. Around to the back of the building. Yeah. And. Anyone back here? Nope. Okay, I'm just going to pick up those four items. Okay. Put them in my pouch. Okay. We'll have to identify them later so I can get the... Uh... Oh, i just give you the 100 the GP pearl. pearl. <laughs> I already have one. Yeah, I'm going to... Yes, I say, that's good. With the ink and paper we've found, I might be able to add identify to my spellbook. Yeah. Yeah. Really useful, especially if we want to divvy up these um, summoning crystals. Yes. And on closer inspection, it will come to the fact that this is indeed a 100 GP pearl. All right. So, we definitely need to come back tomorrow because I want to bid for those scrolls. Mm-hmm. And you said that started at 5 GP? The, the entire folio, yes. I bet there are wizards out there just wishing they could have a chance at five gold piece stack of scrolls. It's a good price, though they are rather standard spells. So. Yes, but for newbies like us, this is amazing. Yes. I mean, there's nothing really... You know, it's... Actually, no, that's not true. These are lovely spells. Yes. I'm very happy that we can have a chance at them. Yes, all right. So that's the viewing. Well, sorry, that's everything. And the, the viewing still continues, obviously. But that's everything that caught our interest. That was everything also of magical note. Yeah. So, so what well, else are we the, going to do? I need to set these reeds aside to dry. dry. Yeah. Well, I have an unseen servant for the, almost an hour. The no, next 50, sorry, minutes. 50 minutes. Yes. Yeah, so... What could I possibly do with an unseen servant for <laughs> an hour? I can think of a few things. Uh, once we've done that, I want to go back to the bridge and see how this is all going. Okay. Uh, it looks like everything is getting... See, the problem is, this is going to take a little while to get set up, and the sacrifice isn't going to be happening until later, probably. So the... 
This is mostly people okay. just coming around, talking, and drinking mostly at this point. This right. is a... It's a bit between a holy ceremony and the usual atmosphere around a festival. Okay, I am going to prop my elbows up on the railing here. Mm -hmm. Kind of look down at the water. And close my eyes. Okay. Perceive through my owl senses. Yep. And the altar. The altar. Is there, is there a ornate... Sacrificial knife there. Uh, you do know that Gregor keeps that ritual dagger on him on, on his person. You, oh, so it's because not you also him. you have no proof of this, but based on the symbology on it, you suspect that might actually serve as his holy symbol. Ah, uh, yeah. So stealing that is not going to be possible. It's possible. It's not going to be easy. No, not for an unseen. Story. There is a. There's a uh, bowl of bronze set there where the libation, which is basically the bull's blood mostly, is going yeah. to be uh, poured into and then offered to Mithras. Okay. Uh, the owl's up here and is perceiving, and I'm looking through her eyes. Where Where is everyone's attention? Is anyone actually even paying attention to the altar? Uh, Gregor is. Oh, but that's about it. He's just like he's just prepping. He's, he's just there prepping everything. He's over there. There's basically the altar with the idol of Mithras. There's the bronze bowl, and there's a bra there's a large brazier of hot coals. That's basically where he's preparing all of his ritual for. Okay. Does anything look moderately precarious in how it is placed on this altar? No, it looks like it's all been carefully laid out. As one might when they're preparing for a ritual. Oh, I'm going to have my unseen servant walk, walk well, traverse, traverse over, this over to this side, avoiding people altogether. And I'm going to have it go up to the altar. Mm -hmm. I can't really see personally very well from here, can I? Are you back out of your owl senses, or...? No, no, no. when I'm out of my owl senses, can I see anything at all on that altar? Make a perception check. It, it is obviously something ostentatious. Mm -hmm. uh, do I have perception? Well, I do not, but I have a plus one wisdom modifier, so that'll be a 16. All right, that's more than enough. It is meant to be seen. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, you have a good view of it. Okay. okay. What does the idol of Mithras look like? Right. It is a there is a it's also made of bronze. There is a stone, effectively, or the appearance of a stone, and then there is a humanoid yeah. figure emerging from it with long hair. Basically, just from the waist up, out of the uh, of the stone, not really bare chested, and just holding a knife up, uh, basically towards where the sun would be. And you know that the knife is one of his holy symbols, which is why it's used in the bull sacrifice. Okay. How how wide is the base of this? It's about the size of an average uh, trophy. Oh, okay. So, right, so it's not. It's not top heavy or bottom heavy. It looks like a statue, yes. then, like a, a trophy statue. So if I have my unseen servant reach up, touch the top of the knife, yep. it could easily topple this off the table. Yes. I do so. It does so. <laughs> it bangs the brass bowl before falling off the table. And get, thoroughly catches Gregor's attention at this. And a few people who have had probably a bit too much to drink applaud. And they laugh raising their, their, their glass. And when it hit the bowl, mm -hmm. did the bowl fly off the table? Uh, it more just wobbled off to the side. It's more precarious than it was. While it was still wobbling, yeah. and have my unseen servant give it a little extra spin. Okay. You just want to have it spin off the table? 
I wanted to fall off the table. Okay, yes. it's easy enough to do. All right. What's Gregor, What's Gregor doing? Is he going for the statue that's just falling? That was what he. That was what he was doing, going for the idol of his deity, and he sees this happen. Okay, so you grab. He's he's trying to get that off, off the ground. Yes, he's right? basically leaning down towards to pick up the idol, and he sees this happen out of the corner of his eye. And now looks up like. Okay. Is this? Oh, this sorry. Is a roll on his part here. Natural twenty. Oh. He starts to think. You see a thought, pro, a thought processing his head. And he just turns and starts looking around, and stops when he sees the two of us. Okay. I'm just pretending, pretending to look in the water. Look staring at me. You you don't I don't think you can roll high enough for that. That was a natural twenty. That was just him trying to figure what out what was going on. You think he's managed it? Deception. deception. Okay, fine, you can roll a deception check. I can roll a, deception. I can roll a natural twenty yeah. too. Or I can roll a two minus one. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Charisma is deception. Yeah. So so, you I think he's made, put huh? two and two together. He's not doing anything wow. at the moment, but you get the distinct feeling that there's a warning glare in our direction. Not like he's already trying to kill us. I don't think his attitude towards us can get any worse. <clears throat> so, did any of that material get damaged? Uh, bronze is a pretty is a pretty sturdy metal. <laughs> True, but it's, it can be brittle, especially on small pointy bits. But anyway, that's fine. I just wanted to cause nope, problems. They're both intact. I say to you, well, if we're done borrowing from Bree's playbook, <laughs> is there anything else you want to do? Uh... uh... Well, I did most of what I want to do. I'm, the auction, obviously, I'm waiting for for tomorrow. Yeah, that's not until tomorrow. Yeah, yeah that'll be interesting because I do want those scrolls. The problem now is if we start bidding on something out of just sheer spite, he may end up bidding on them. That is true. That has That is a possible instinct you put in his mind. Yes. So I am going to do something in prepping for that. I want to go to the inn. I'm going to go in there. Uh, and believe it or not, I'm not going there to talk to Bree. I want to talk to her brother. Perrin. Okay. Because I think I have a job for him. Okay. So you go up to... Right, Perrin is usually working in the back with his mother. So you go and talk to yeah. Andrew. Yeah. We'll go and talk to Ander and say hi. And we'll order some. This lunch. is the first time you notice really that the inn has been uh, uh, not busy in recent days. Oh yeah, because <laughs> oh, yeah, well, they have all, well, they have all that yeah. going on. So yes. Okay. All you right. Want to order uh, a meal yeah. and a drink. Order a meal, have a drink, and uh, ask if uh, Perrin's around. Uh, Perrin, is Bree around too? Uh, uh, I haven't seen Bree since the morning. She's off somewhere. There again, no, I you, you, you hear him say one? again. <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, he says, but yes, if you want to talk to Perrin yeah, as long as it's a short conversation, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, I would like to hire him for a little bit for an odd job I want to do. Is that something that can be fit into your work schedule with him? Uh, all right. What exactly is it you want him to do? <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna be busy, and but there's something at the auction that I want to bid for, and I was hoping he can do the bidding for me. Make uh, uh, make a persuasion check. Oh, not that bad a thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, fortunately, uh, the fourteen minus one. Okay. Yeah, it was, uh, that that's that's fine. This is what are I'm willing to pay his wages. Yes, that helps. That's fine. Hopefully, we can get Bree back to help us then. But 
Oh, says, uh, all right, what are you up to with the, then that it has you so distracted? I just have a bunch of stuff I need to get together, and I do want to pick up a couple of things I saw there, but I just don't have the time to devote to a whole auction all day. That's all. I've got stuff I just need to do. That's all. Stuff I have to help with my mom. How's that? <laughs> Something he should understand, mm -hmm. at least. Yeah, no, he believes you perfectly. Natural one on insight check. Okay. All right, Perrin. All right, Perrin. Yes, so Perrin brings out our food and understands you want to talk to us, so he just comes and sits at our table. I'm going to have a seat. Have a, seat. Uh, I have a little task for you, which I'm quite willing to reimburse you. I mean, what does he make here in a day? Out of curiosity, anyway, do I know that? <laughs> Bree probably would have told me. Does he make any money at all? They do get wages, which is more allowance, really, because they live here. Uh, as how well. much money is. I'm sure Bree has complained about this at least once or twice about how little money she gets. Uh, do I know roughly how much they make for a day? Uh, well, first of all, it's usually per week, not day. All right. And they are they're reimbursed somewhat. Usually, they end up getting uh, on average about to adds it to about a gold piece every three weeks. All right. All right. Considering they also live here and eat here for free. Yeah. <laughs> well, they are their kids. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. I asked him if he would be interested in earning a few silver pieces for a little bit of really easy work. Okay. He's interested. He's also he's mostly interested uh, in how much you're going to pay him. Uh, this... He's What's mostly that? interested in how much you are going to pay him. <laughs> well, there's an item in the auction I want you to bid on. Um... I will take you over and show it to you, uh, so you know which one it is. And I just want you to bid on it, and I'll give you the money to buy it. And then for that, you will earn. Uh, what would you like? How much? Besides a day off of work, which you're getting for free. How much money uh, would you need for me to do this small favor for me? A couple silver. Ah. Uh... Right. He is going to ask for. He asked for three silver pieces. That is his pay. All right, that's fair. Okay. We have more than enough to cover that. Yep. Okay. Good. So you're going to give him the silver pieces now? Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that sort of favor. <laughs> Payment afterwards. Exactly. <laughs> Payment upon completion of job. So how are it, so how is he going to bid mm -hmm. on this, obviously, because he may not have the money to cover that. No, no, we'll, I'll pay oh. for it. He it doesn't. It's not. You don't have to, don't have to like pay the second you win a bid. It's usually at the end of the auction, yep. you uh, go and pay, give them the money and then collect your items. Mm -hmm. You know, run it. Well, I mean, there are some auctions where you buy, you win the bid, and you buy it right there and then. Okay. Did we get the impression that that's what this auction was all about? Was it like cash and carry that very second? Uh, no, it's not going to be that. But they probably would accept it. But it's optional. No, that's fine. No, that's fine. I'll, I'll definitely don't worry about it. I'll be there. I'll pay for the item and give you your money. Okay. So. So that. Uh... And of course, I want him to. I'll, I'll sometime today. I'll take him over. And I'll show him the item I want him to build. Okay. On. Probably would be easiest to do that now. Yeah, we'll just do that okay. now. So you point out the right. portfolio to him, which is the item you want. Yes. New stands. Sees the <laughs> sees the price tag and is a little impressed that you want to spend that much on it. But apart from that, he's perfectly fine. All right. All right. Doesn't want to wrangle more money out of me now that he knows I have five gold pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Not now. All right. Okay. Like said, so that's taken care of. Well, that's pretty much everything on my agenda except one thing. So, yes, your little owl flight. Yes. So I'm going to head home. All that's taken care of. I'm going up to my room. And I'm going to tell them, oh, this little 
a little stiff and sore. Uh, just take a quick nap. Yeah. Well, that's the point in that we want to be rested for that auction tomorrow. <laughs> And I'm going to have my owl, which is still perched on Father Gregory's yep. place. The instructions are to fly in the direction of that plume of smoke, so uh, northeast, I think it is. Yeah, east slightly yeah. with a slightly north trail towards yeah. it, yeah. So, yes. East, northeast. Yeah. Okay. And... Um, fly really high because <laughs> I don't want her to be in bow shot just in case someone's feeling like just shooting down a random bird and I'm going to have her fly until she reaches the plume of smoke and I'm just going to lay there in bed and focus on her through her okay. senses while you're doing that I'm going to start uh, laying out the reeds to dry out and I'm going to start the process for making the ink and paper I need well, it is a nice sunny day. I'm sure my mom has some drying racks she can make yep. use of. If nothing else, I'm and, going to get started uh, with the ink, at least. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so, you what do I close see? your eyes and go into your owl senses. Yeah. All right. So, immediately off the plateau is a mix of hilly and rocky terrain, which quickly gives way to an expanse of grasslands and rolling hills. There's some sparse yeah. trees, but not too much. Not too many heavy woods this early on. Right. Okay. Now, further on, you see what well, catches your eye is a ruined garrison, or likely not too small to be a fort or a citadel, but something along those lines, which yeah. some creatures seem to have taken up residence in. You can't get a good detail at this point, and appear to be effecting repairs to it. Did you want to try? Uh, and get a... I am going to definitely try and see what I'm looking right. at. Perception check, please. Try and figure it out. Well, twelve humanoid. Not can't make it too much detail. Yeah. You can tell that there are at least only two creatures visible at the moment. Okay. okay. All right, your owl keeps going. Past that garrison, yeah. there is a thick forested area, which your owl can't make. A, your owl is not able to make it many real details beneath a canopy. It's very thick forested. It over. This forest goes on for a considerable time as you're flying before it terminates in a clearing that has a gorge splitting the land for miles. Okay. Well, uh, past that, there's a small wooded area, and you also see a large lake. And uh, as, a, as the land approaches that said lake, it becomes clo it becomes more marsh land and swamps. Okay. okay. Uh, a river comes off of that lake, yeah. and yeah. following its lead, you come to a fortified town with a wooden palisade at a crossroad, which goes north and west, north and south, and it also forks off east. And that is where you imagine the plume of smoke is coming from. In fact, you can see that there is smoke rising from some of the buildings. All right. This is my perception check to see what kind of detail I'm able to see this high up over this town. Okay. All right. All right. I guess this is the more important number anyway. Uh, 22. 22. Okay. Uh, it is a large, uh, larger settlement. You estimate its size probably 10 times the size of Lakeside. And that is a... That is a strong wooden palisade. This is fortified. This is meant to right. repel attackers, and you see all manner of uh, uh, people moving about. Even at that roll, from this distance, oh. it's hard to tell uh, species from apart, but you can tell that there's this is a more cosmopolitan area as opposed to Lakeside. And a much higher population? Much higher population, yes. Excellent. You also, with that roll, notice that there is uh, a uh, hawk heading in your owl's direction. Alright, so you... I got what I yep. wanted. Pop out of existence. Frustrate that, Frustrate that yeah. hawk. It was a good roll on its part, but that was not as good as yours. 
Alright, I will get up, shake my limbs out, and pass on the information okay. to you. If you're okay. back now from your herb drying. So that's setting up to, uh, to make. I'm also going to... Uh, work, so you see I'm in the middle of working on the ink. So, normally at this point there would be an ability check to make this ink. There's going to be that. However, yeah. as part of reaching second level, we got our arcane traditions. I chose a school of divination. Oh. Which yes. allows me to, after each long rest, roll two D a pair of d20s and record the results as portents. I can later yeah. use those rolls on an ability check, an attack roll, or a saving throw for myself or any other creature I can see. So I'm going to use the 16 yeah. that I rolled on my portents yeah. during our last long rest and use this for the check here. Uh, so this... So in our con check, I got a twenty-two in total with that. This is a neat little thing you can that uh, divinate, diviners can do. Yeah. So at a twenty-two, I'm enough to is enough to process some of these. Weren't you also going to need uh, some of the, the materials for my alchemical yes, stuff? Yes, alcohol was one of the things that was meant, that was part that we just guess was going to be part of that. So I'm going to need to borrow some. And then, well, you're going to yeah. need it. <laughs> I don't think I'm getting it back. <laughs> and also you're going to need a mortar and pestle to grind up some of those walnuts we yep. got. All right. So your check is high enough. So just roll to see the quantity. Yep, okay. All right. That's my D4. All right, so I have enough materials to up this a bit. It's gonna be, there's going to be a plus to this, fortunately. Let's roll. Yeah. <laughs> Four plus two. Six. There's six doses of ink. That was wow. enough to get that. Okay. All right. We're going to be doing some writing. Yes, that is good. Well, so far everything's going really well today. Got some crystals, yes. which are excellent. And All right. didn't lose my owl, which is even better. Yep. Well, actually, we have good. now have the ink and uh, some paper to do transcribing. We're gonna need to we're gonna need yeah. to wait a bit longer on the other the process the other reads to make more parchment. I think that check will probably be like tomorrow, probably. Yeah, or before we go to bed, I might have time for it. Yeah. Alright, so we have the ink though. All right. So that took how long for my all to fly there? Uh, it a few hours. It was uh, somewhere, but so it's basically about three and a half hours. This entire process took. All right. So supper time. Yes. Go down and have a bite to eat. Okay. This time I will look for Bree. Okay, this time you're gonna look for Bree. Okay. You're gonna you're gonna roll oh. for it. I need to roll. <laughs> yep. Well, unless she comes and says hi, I probably won't find her. Eight. No, don't see her at this point. Well, what she's up to. I have a bad feeling that she's, well, doing exactly what I was just doing, causing mischief. <laughs> All right. After we have a bite to eat. Oh, I suppose we should take two meals off of our income. Yep. So that's a silver. So that's two silver from each of us. Yep. Okay. Okay. You can also mark off Ender's pay now if you want to. Not to. In case you forget later. Sorry, Perrin's pay. All right. Okay. So, so, what's Father Gregor up to? Uh, his uh, ceremony is in full swing at this point, and have they killed that poor bull yet? Not yet. It seems to actually be putting up a bit of a fight at the moment. Uh, oh, I wish I had to speak with animals yeah. or, animal or animal friendship or something. That would be so nice to have that bull just 
Gore him. <laughs> He's having a few uh, people come over and, uh, and some of his acolytes attempt to calm the bull while he handles this. Whatever they gave it in their food, whatever sedative, whatever they tried to calm it down, clearly did not work. Alright. Alright. Speaking of which, hmm. Why not this Mithras cult? Church, whatever. Yes. What is it involved at some point in time that Gregor is, like, is there a chalice there that he's going to drink out of? Uh. You didn't see a chalice set up there. You saw the bowl for the libation. Yeah. Well, he doesn't drink that. No, so. that's offered to Mithras. Yeah. <laughs> They're starting to drink bull's blood, I know. You also know that, right. that what you would know is that is offered, as is the bull's head. Wow. Both of those will be put right. into that brazier. That brazier for a whole cow's head? Holy crap. That's an awful lot of... Uh, Material to roast. Okay. Okay. I can't, I can't see any real opportunity to cause mischief there, unfortunately. Well, besides stampeding the bull. Which is probably a little bit beyond what I want to do. Yeah. I don't mind pranks, but... So... No one. At this point, with uh, the assistance of all these others... Gregor manages to slaughter the bull. And he's calling for one of his acolytes to basically bring over the axe, which will be used to re fully remove the bull's head now that he's been killed with his ritual knife. Alright. Okay. Okay. Alright. The head is removed after some effort. Yep. Its blood is collected in the bowl. The head is placed into the brazier, which is lit. And, uh... Gregor takes the bull. Sorry, takes the bowl. Yep. And, and uh, gives a short prayer to Mithras. And says, We consign our offering to the flame. And he pours the blood in onto the bull's head and into the brazier as it burns and steams. Yeah. Alright. All right. Make a perception check for me. Uh, perception will be a 16. Alright. That's enough. You notice movement in the lake. Mithras coming to say hi? A, something large is moving under the water. And it comes up to where the dock is, which is just past the church. So there's something big under the water yeah, over here? and it breaches the water. You see a large shell encrusted in, in coral and barnacles and other detritus. You see a large arthropod crawl coming up on... Multiple legs with two large pincers being used before. You see a giant hermit crab, which seems to be being drawn by the smell of this slaughter. And it. Has anyone noticed this besides me? Uh, well, as it comes up onto the. Yeah, everyone notices as it comes up on to the dock and moves around towards where the smell is coming from. And the roasting bull's head. And what are they doing? Uh, well, uh, the good majority of them panic and they start running. Which is bad for us because we are currently on the bridge. <laughs> which is the only yes. way to get to the rest of the town, away from this thing. So, uh, well, before we get stampeded, yeah. and I would like to get off the bridge... Yeah. And, like, right here for the moment. Yeah, so, but I think we're going to need to make our way this way. I want to see what happens first, though, with Gregor. Yeah, so we leap the railing, basically. Uh, I'm going to ask you to make a dexterity check. 
Oh, great. Wow. Wow. Am I ever, am I ever graceful? <laughs> 20. 20. Not no. Not I have a 17. So we both manage it. Right. So we're just standing there for the moment watching this? Uh, well, we're going to start making our way north. Yeah, okay, so we start heading toward towards the uh, all of this. Yeah. Uh, yes. The uh, going, against, going against the flow of people. <laughs> but we're near the water, so they're not going to want to go into the water no. themselves. No, they all we hear people rushing behind us as they go across the bridge. All right. They yell out to them. That's what you get for worshiping Mithras. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Make a persuasion check, actually. Four minus one. Four minus one. <laughs> hang on, hang on, Three. hang on. Do I want to give advantage for this? They did just see something quite. Yeah, roll the advantage. Uh, I've used up my inspiration did, too, yes. so. Uh, 19 minus, minus, one. minus 1, which is 18. Better. You hear a few people say, yeah, no, no kidding, as they run past. You probably didn't ap uh, appeal to most people, this is chaos, but you get the feeling that at least a few people are probably taking that as as being like, yeah, that might you might have a point there. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Right. Uh, who is not running? Uh, Gregor is standing there, looking around, obviously seeing that he needs to make a stand. He does point to one of his acolytes, the one who used the axe to slaughter the the bull. He says, he says go to the watchtower, bring the watch. He says, alert everyone. And the acolyte, realizing that he needs to do something here, starts running in the direction of the... <laughs> <laughs> There's an order I can actually obey. <laughs> running, he starts running towards uh, the bridge, following everyone else. But he, you can clear he's probably going to be heading towards the watchtower. He turns to uh, at least a few to the others who were helping him, who are mostly fishermen and a few other acolytes, and says, his "Brothers, we must stand together against this abomination." And you see, they are but they are turning to face this creature. Gregor, to so his credit, people... is actually standing pretty close to the front to them at this point. Right. What are we doing? So, how many, are... how many people are making this stand? Five, including Gregor. Right. Two acolytes right. and two are fishermen. Make... These are the ones who helped them uh, subdue the bull. Right. Okay. How far away am I from them? Alright, let's see. That's... From... So we're yeah. making our way so up, up that this way. way. So basically, I assume they're making their stand that, that here. The crab is by the water still. There, no, no, right where you were. It's fine, right by the river there. Let's come to that side. It. Oh, so this is where that's where it's come is. to. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the, they are just a, they're just. We're right in front of it. Well, the fire's over by the brazier's right by the temple, so they're standing right a bit, a bit by the edge of that. Is yeah. That? So they're about there at the moment. Right. Okay. Yeah, we are yeah so here. it's probably about 30 feet. We can get there with our speed if you want to run in. Oh, I don't want to run in at all. What I want to do, want to do is right. say in a loud voice, Father Gregor, Father Gregor would, you like would you like a hand at this, or do you have it covered with your mystical abilities with Mithras? He just gives a nod to you as if to for assistance. And we are going to probably be rolling for initiative next. Alright. All right.